I think that the biggest issue that I want to make sure that the world understands is the predictive nature of what has been stated as back as far back as 2017 that there was going to be this pandemic but there's no way that somebody could have predicted that unless they had some inside knowledge of a release of some type of a pathogenic pandemic potential chimeric derivative type pathogen there's no way you can predict that if you can't predict the market tomorrow or the next day you can't predict the lottery numbers a week out how can you predict if there's going to be a pandemic and those people that say that their models and that are predictive models, believe me, if we could predict stuff like that, then the world would be a much, much better place for all of humanity. But the answer is you can't make those type of predictions. And now they've got the second wave of COVID-19 that they're predicting. And I want to make sure that the world understands what is really getting ready to happen. Because as people are allowed to come back into society, their immune systems are already going to have been suppressed because of the wearing of the mask, which is going to increase cortisol levels. It's going to put people into a pseudo hypoxic state. They're having to suck oxygen through a mask. It drives the cortisol levels up, which then creates a sympathetic mimetic drive. It suppresses the lymphocyte subpopulation, decreases the immune system, and renders an individual more susceptible to any type of pathogen, whether it be bacteria, virus, spirochete, mycoplasma, yeast, parasite, whatever. So that's the first component when people start coming back into society their immune systems are going to be more vulnerable. Plus the fact that they've been stressed out emotionally, financially, psychologically, staying at home, coming back out, their, their bodies are going to be under duress, under stress, and so they're going to be more susceptible to any pathogen. So the face mask agenda seems to be, if, if, you're, if you look at it from just a safety standpoint, it's highly suspect. If you look at it from a scientific perspective, it's the agenda is nefarious. The use of a face mask is designed to protect not the doctor or the nurse, but the patient. So that when a surgeon is operating and doing a bypass surgery or a herniography or a joint replacement, that if the surgeon sneezes or coughs or drools or spits or whatever, you don't want to get the surgical field contaminated. You want to maintain that sterile field. When People in the Far East, for example, wear a mask. They're wearing a mask so out of courtesy for other people so that if they're sick, they're not going to get somebody else sick. That's the reason people wear masks. Now, this mandate of wearing a mask, if you notice during the press conferences with the president, the president's never worn a face mask. So the first thing about a face mask is that we already talked about it's suppressing the immune system because you're driving the person into a hypoxic state. There have been multiple studies that have been done on this where they've actually studied surgeons and seen the level of oxygenation, and especially on a chronic basis. Um, Dr. Blaylock, Russell Blaylock, put out a great paper that summarized many of those research points. So we know that that happens. We know it suppresses the immune system because of that uh, sympathetic mimetic drive that we initiate because we're having to suck oxygen through the face mask. On top of that, we breathe out carbon dioxide. But when you've got a mask on, you're actually creating a decrease you're creating actually an increase in respiratory drive because you get more carbon dioxide coming back from the face mask. Now, the face mask also creates other types of issues because you've got, you've got you know, irritating your face and sweating and all the stuff. So you're always fiddling around with your, with your face. And then the last point about the face, and there's a lot of points we can make about the face mask, but the last and most idiotic aspect of this is that it's like building a chain link fence to prevent a fly from getting into your house or a split rail fence to keep mice out. The viral particles that we're trying to keep out of our bodies are so much smaller than the smallest pore of these masks. Now, there's also uh, another thought process that this entire thing that's being blamed on COVID-19 is actually the real pathology that people are experiencing, a pathology that is actually from a secondary to a histotoxic hypoxic injury, which has nothing to do with the virus, is to do with contamination from combustion of fossil fuels, from the incinerator burn-offs, from the chemtrails, from all the different components in the quality of the air. So we had that present in Wuhan because we know that the level of air there was extremely, extremely poor as far as back as 2017, 2016, CNN and BBC covered the air quality issue in Wuhan, and it was uh, basically garnered an international attention because of the quality of the air. On top of that, Iran, Italy, and New York have all the same issues. So if this is a histo 
toxic, hypoxic injury, then when you're wearing a face mask, and let me just make sure for the audience, the doctors here obviously know what that means, but histo meaning cell, toxic meaning toxicity. So on the cellular level, the toxicity that's resulting in a hypoxic injury, which is decrease in oxygen. So many of the doctors that have been censored that are in the trenches have explained that this does not present like a viral injury. People are turning blue. It looks like an altitude type sickness. It looks like a hypoxic injury. Well, that's exactly what this histotoxic um, hypoxic injury would do. And so if that's the case, when you're wearing a face mask, there are various plastics in there. And as we continue to breathe back and forth, the humidity starts to cause that propylene, uh, whatever the, the material is, I think it's propylene glycol or some, some type of a plastic, it starts to break down. And now you're ingesting or inhaling many of these chemicals that are organophosphates or that, that may have these plastic components in there. We, I don't even know all the different components in there, but they're inhaling that, which is going to further exacerbate a histotoxic hypoxic injury. So you've got the practical aspect that it doesn't work. It's like building a fence with mosquitoes coming in. But on top of that, it's actually creating a worse issue. It's suppressing the immune system. And if our goal is to make people healthy, the first thing we should be doing is telling them not to wear a mask, especially when it's not designed. A mask is not designed for the the to protect the doctor, it's designed to protect the sterile field that the doctor is operating in. But that's the point. There are going to be people that that cannot tolerate the truth because if they believe this, then it forces them to question all their previous beliefs that they've held. And they can't afford to do that because it's just too difficult. So they would much rather say, no, you're crazy and this is the truth. And that's what cognitive dissonance is. Unfortunately, it's not how society evolves. And those of you, those of you that are on here, you have no idea the level of gratitude that I have for you. You have no idea because of you and everyone else like you, our humanity will survive. And this is the reason that when people give me accolades, it's, it's not about me, guys. I don't care about any of those accolades. I care about my kids and I care about your kids and I care about all the future kids because we're talking about the future of the human race and what they're doing is committing the greatest atrocity the greatest crime against mankind that has ever been committed and if we allow them to get away with it it will be the end of recorded history as we know it we are talking about a mass extinction level event here that that's potentially coming down the pipeline and it may have been the ice age before it may have been something else but well, this is going to be because of the stupidity of the human species. So we have to rise up right now. We have to do it. It's not about our survival. I don't care whether Brian, you live or I live. I don't care about that. If somebody said that you can end this right now and give your life, I would do it in a flash. And I bet you that the vast majority, if not every one of these doctors on here would do the same thing so that the world can continue to move forward the way it's supposed to. We have to, we have to make this change now we have to wake up we have to realize what's happening because the planet's survival literally the human species survival is at stake so all for those of you that don't know what an intention is the, the difference between an intention and a prayer is nothing it's a thought that you're putting out there's no religious um, implication here whatsoever it's what we want to hold in our heart because remember that love is the antidote to fear love is the opposite of fear but love is not an emotion. Love is a source of creation. People mistake love for being an emotion. So what we want to do is we want to hold that love in our hearts for everybody else and hope that their, set that intention that their energy and their vibration evolves to the level that they understand what we already understand. David Hawkins, who has now passed, Dr. David Hawkins was an MD, PhD who had a map of consciousness and anything below 200, like things like apathy and fear and greed and, and anger, below 200, above 200 was good stuff, uh, acceptance, gratitude, love was at 560. And I believe on the calibration they measured when love, when one person that's resonating at love negated over 100,000 people that were in fear. So let's hold that place of love in our heart and gratitude and compassion for those that don't understand and that in our intention is that they'd start to understand that the information starts coming to them and that source energy that the creator helps us during this period of evolution to allow us to bring this period of evolution 
to a quick end because we know it's difficult, we know it's tough, but that's part and parcel of growth and growth comes is necessary for evolution. So just take deep breaths in and out. You can keep your eyes open or close whatever feels good and you'll feel it.